Thank the Lord for another blessed and wonderful day. Want to give a great shout out to the YouTube family from my daddy, Big Papa JT, all the way down to Orange Flavor. Hope everybody doing good and having a wonderful morning. I want to talk about when Jesus cleared out the temple. When he cleared the temple out, and I want to call this video Respect the House of God. Respect the House of God. Now, we all know that this is uh, found in all four of the Gospels, and they all kind of explain it they different way. But I'm going to come from the one in, the, uh, in John chapter 2, and we're going to start at uh, verse 12. And, uh, but like I said, you can find this in Matthew, Mark, and Luke, I believe. And uh, it's even, I believe in Mark, it's compared with the fig tree. And my question to the YouTube family is, why did Jesus curse that fig tree? Why did he curse that fig tree? That's the question for the day. Now, let's get into this. Now, we all know that um, this happens. I'm coming from the one in John chapter 2, so... His is a little different. This is happening right after Jesus turned the water into wine. Right after he turned the water into wine and he was on his way to Jerusalem, you know, again. So verse 12 says, after this, he went down to Capernaum and he and his mother and his brethren and his disciples. And they continued there not for many days. So in other words, they only stayed there a few days. Now let's move on to verse 13. And 13 says, and the Jews Passover was at hand, and Jesus went to Jerusalem. And we all are familiar with Passover now, which is what we explained in that other video about Passover, which we really don't hear about nowadays in church, which, which the Jews celebrate. But in Baptist churches and in different places, they celebrate Easter, which don't have nothing to do really with, with what it's supposed to be about. But I'm not going to get into no video about Easter which I don't care nothing about. And then we look on on 14, and it says, And found in the temple those that sold oxen and sheep and doves and the changes of money sitting. So in other words, now Jesus is on his way to the temple, which is his father's place, where it should be worship going on at, praying. And you know, he's, Jesus is probably expecting to see praying and worship going on towards the father. But he goes in there and see these men in her you know, setting things and, and ripping folks off. And then 15 says, and when he had made the scounds of small carts, he drove them out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the change of money and overthrew the tables. So in other words, we can see how Jesus goes in her and that scrounge or scrounge or scourge, some might say. In other words, he made a whip. And he started driving people out. And then he started flipping the tables over on them because, see, the house of God is supposed to be respected. It's supposed to be respected. And Jesus, now let me say this off the top, Jesus did not sin with this because we all know Jesus had no sin. And wasn't nobody going, wasn't going, we're going to see it nowadays time, wasn't nobody going to buck up to Jesus. They wasn't going to square up with Jesus on this. Now, let's look at 16. And said unto them that sold doves, Take these things hence. Make not my father's house and house of merchandise. In other words, respect my father's house. Don't come up in here trying to make a market out of my father's house. What's wrong with y'all? And then 17 says, his disciples had remembered that it is written, the zeal of thine house had eaten me up. And verse 18 says, then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto us, seeing that thou dost these things? Or make it, here we go back again, referring back to these old Pharisees. Now remind you, Jesus was a Jew. Now these same Jews are questioning him, saying, Then answer to the Jews, What sign showest thou unto us? Hmm. You see what I'm saying? Seeing that thou dost these things. In other words, they always, Pharisees always question Jesus. Because they had their own way of doing things. So they was wondering, who are you and why are you doing this? You know, what give who give you authority to come over here and flip over tables and, 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 and try to run us out of here? In so many words, that's what these Pharisees are saying right here. Now, where we at? Verse, verse 18, oh, 19, excuse me. Jesus answered and said unto them, destroy this temple. And in three days I will raise it up. 
And now we look at verse 20. Here go these Pharisees again, these old Jews. Then said the Jews, 40 and 60 years was this temple in building, and would thou rip it up in three days? In other words, it took 46 years to build this temple. How you gonna build it back up in three days? Now let's let's get a good picture of this temple. This ain't no little bitty church. No, no little bitty raggedy church like we see nowadays. A whole lot of these churches just raggedy and falling over. This temple had to look pretty nice, people. It had to be pretty nice. I always like the picture in my mind. It looked like a big old stadium. I think about the Cowboy Stadium, and I, I think about and, and looking at this building. It had to be a nice size building that whole many people, but it was made to be a house of worship. Now these people that are doing whatever, and uh, so that's why Jesus had to get them straight. Now we moving on to verse uh, 21. But he spake of the temple of his body. So in other words, Jesus was referring back to his body as the temple. Like he always tell us, this is our temple. You know, you treat it with respect. Treat your body a living sacrifice to be holy and acceptable. And then 22 says, when therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he said unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus had said. 23 says, now when he was in Jerusalem at the Passover and the feast day, many believed in his name when they saw the miracles which he did. 24 says, but Jesus did not commit himself unto them because he knew all men. 25 says, and needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man. In other words, Jesus know all about man and what man is capable of doing, capable of doing. He didn't need no testimony. He knew how men were. And we're going to stop at 25, which that's the end anyway. May God have a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. That's John chapter 2, verses 12 through 25. Now, like to what I was saying at the beginning, you need to respect the house of God. Now, I know I'm going to have a question on well, JT, are you saying we shouldn't have fundraisers and we shouldn't have these raffle tickets and bake sales and, and selling fish? I'm going to say this just off top. You can do that stuff, but when you come to disrespecting the house of God, like I said in the Tide video, my problem is you setting all these you setting all these fish plates and bake sales, and then it has nothing to show for the house of God. Now, you can take that how you want it. Now, once again, Jesus did not sin in this. Jesus had all the right to do what he did because the Pharisees always had their way of doing things. Now, remind you again, look at what the Jews are saying to Jesus. And once again, Jesus is a Jew. His own people, which is the Bible, I always call them the Pharisees. They knew what was right. That's why he always said, you, you, you don't, you can listen at them. They know the word of God, but don't practice their ways. Don't do what they do in so many words because these Pharisees, they had a way of doing their own things. You can see in the book of Matthew how many times Jesus had to check these Pharisees, these scribes, the hypocrites. Though they do know the word, but don't practice what they do because they got their own way. Even when they prayed, they had their own way. Even when they fast, they had their own way. They always wanted to be seen. They wanted to stand out on corners and such and such. Wanted to be seen. So when we look at this, we can learn that the house of God needs to be respected. Now I'm going to tie this in with some of these begging preachers who's trying to make, who's trying to make the house of God, I always say it like this, they're trying to turn turn the word and, 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 and profit and off of the word. Want to make Jesus out of a slot machine. Now, I'm all for prosperity. But the way folks are doing prosperity nowadays, but not everybody, it's not lining up with the word of God. That's why you see so many churches falling over. Now, you in there sending all these baked cakes and, and, and all this stuff in the fish place, but you haven't done nothing with the money to take care of the house of God. And the house of God still look the same. Now, if you tie this in with standing over the pool, pay begging for money, then what do what do you think? Come on, people, by looking at these scriptures, these scriptures here. If you are in her begging, in other words, what they were saying to her, you done turned the house, of, you done turned the house of God into a place where the thieves can come chill at and the robbers. And that's what it was, people. 
That's why Jesus had to turn them tables over on folks. He had to pull out that whip. Don't make the Lord whip your church. Because he will do it. I see so many houses of God closed down now. Behind this same mess. People don't think people be going on the church ground setting stuff. Oh yeah. Yes they do. Yes they do. Now I'm going to leave that up to you if you think it's wrong or right. I'm not going to get into no debate behind that. What I'm saying right here, the house of God has it's, it's far away from being respected now. You remember when he told Moses to take off your sandals you on holy ground? The ground is supposed to be holy. Now any and everything is going on in the house of God. I don't see people getting I done seen people smoking weed on ch on the church ground. I see deacons going outside smoking cigarettes on the church ground. You see people cussing folks out on the church ground. You done had all kind of altercations. Respect the house of God. But it's hard to respect it now because the most of the people in position ain't even respectful. I know I'm finna make some folks mad with this video. Hey y'all. I can't, I can't worry about you getting mad, man. The truth have to be told. He pulled, Jesus pulled out a whip and drove those folks out of there. See, we need more pastors to stand on the truth and start driving some of this mess out of these churches. But how can a pastor drive some of this mess out of the church and the pastors ain't right? See, it starts from the head. You got a weak leader, you got a weak church. Flipping the tables over. Mm. Now, once again, you got to look at the point Jesus was trying to make. Because best believe Jesus still loved them. He had to teach them, this is the house of God. Respect my father's house. This ain't the place for robbing and robbing folks. And See, once again, they was robbing them folks in there. Just like nowadays, some of these preachers are robbing the congregation. Not all preachers, but a lot of preachers are robbing the congregation. That's a no-no. And I don't care who you are looking at this video and you don't agree with it, that's fine. I'm not going to lose no sleep over that. So let's respect the house of God. Respect it because you will be put in check. That's why the church is so important to the Lord. That's why Revelation teaches you that judgment starts in the house first. Starts in the house of God first. Start within us Christian folks. We got to straighten up and fly right. Old songs say, straighten up and fly right. God bless you. God keep you. Love everybody. Y'all have a beautiful and blessed day. And I'll see y'all next time with the word. God bless you.